New typhoon on the cards on today's Tropical Weather Bulletin. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for July 19th. Could we finally be seeing the start of some significant progress in the Western Pacific? Well, it looks like with a high chance now for an area of interest in the Philippine Sea that is showing significant signs for model runs of becoming a substantial typhoon in the next few days. We'll get on to that in a moment. But first, the Atlantic, day 49 of hurricane season, and I'm pleased to say once again that there is nothing to mark. Uh, there is a front moving off the east coast of the United States and some cloud cover extending through the deep south. But in general, the Atlantic is looking very quiet right now. Well, in the eastern Pacific, we're still holding on to these two 10% areas of interest that we've marked on day 63 of hurricane season. Although it really looks like none of these are going to form. And the eastern Pacific continues its lamentable start uh, to this year's hurricane season. In the Western Pacific then, we're looking at these two areas of interest. Both of them could still form. 91W on the left, 50% chance moving into the South China Sea. And 80% now for Invest 92W, which looks like it could form almost at any time this afternoon and evening uh, UTC. And no areas of interest in the Indian Ocean. However, the IMD have marked a little disturbance just off the coast of the coast of India there along the east coast, I think near Odisha, uh, which will be moving inland very shortly. We'll have a very small opportunity uh, to produce some convective showers and some significant storms. And this is the southwest Indian Ocean where we've got no areas of interest right now. Uh, just a bulk of cloud over the open high seas there and not really anything over land area. Let's check in with Invest 92W then. Its current position is 616 kilometers east northeast of Samar, 694 from Tacloban, 726 from Catanduanes, 1105 from Manila, and 1655 from Taipei, Taiwan. Well, this system will be moving northwest and probably more north northwest later on. It will give at best a glancing blow to the Philippines um, and is expected to probably stay further out at sea and then move up towards Taiwan, where it could produce a substantial impact there for Taiwan and the southern Japanese islands and maybe China later on. Well, here's the latest satellite imagery where you can see both of these systems in action. And it really is looking very good now, 92W. That could become a tropical depression uh, fairly soon. On the left-hand side, Invest 91W trying to get itself together as well. Um, convection very high on the left-hand side of it. Uh, possibly wind shear or dry air getting in the way there, not over the centre. There's a quick look at the Eastern Pacific as well. A few little systems over there, uh, but not too much of note. And now we go back to Invest 91W there. This is a system that's just leaving the Philippines over the South China Sea now. It's still got some uh, way to go before it gets itself properly organized. Um, it doesn't look like it's got a very good circulation, uh, but certainly it's got a chance as it moves over the good conditions of the South China Sea, uh, th certainly throwing up a lot of convection, and it could become a weak tropical storm as it heads towards Hainan Island in the next few days and then on towards the mainland of China moving pretty much due north by that point or possibly even rebounding slightly back northeastwards towards Macau. There's Invest 92W and it's just a burst of cloud there in the middle uh, and it's got a big uh, area of banding around it. I don't know if you call it actual banding but a few clouds all around the center. Um, and it's really looking much better in those latest images. Uh, convection really starting to blow up and spiral out there, uh, but it's got a moisture bank by the looks of things around it. So a good environment for this system to develop. And as we know, those sea surface temperatures have been very warm in this region. We'll show you that in a few moments, but looking very good that Invest 92W should form at this point. This is what's left of Invest 92E, if anyone was wondering, that Eastern Pacific system that might have had a chance well, it looks quite nice at the lower levels, but there's no convection left now, completely bereft of it, and it's entering colder sea surface temperatures as well. So this system is pretty much done. 
North Atlantic looking at that little band that's moving off the coast there of uh, the United States and into the Caribbean region here. A few clouds blowing up across uh, Cuba, a few storms and over the Dominican Republic as well and one or two little storms over the Yucatan. Here's the coast of Africa where we've got one or two little uh, waves starting to emerge there with a lot of convection at this time but usually they drop off quite quickly as they enter the Atlantic. Here's the eastern Pacific. You can see quite a big burst there over the Gulf of Tehuantepec. Uh, that's not the area of interest that we're talking about though it's a little bit further south and looking out to sea there that other system much further out now uh, looking pretty poor Westpac, those two areas of interest once again and Invest 92W has a massive influence around it it has to be said it's as at least as long as the Philippine Islands are and this is the North Indian Ocean you can quickly try and make out that monsoonal disturbance there just off the coast of India blowing up some convection just in those late frames there and in the Arabian Sea a few little storms blowing off the coast of India as well you can take a look at all that satellite imagery on the Force 13 website well, sea surface temperatures are pretty warm still as well. The eastern Pacific, indeed, up to 30 degrees and possibly one or two spots higher than that. Those temperatures are starting to ratchet up. In the Atlantic, of course, it's been warm for a long time and still very warm indeed in the northern Gulf of Mexico, over 30 degrees Celsius commonplace. In the open Atlantic as well, those temperatures starting to get up, even in the eastern Atlantic now where it's looking better. Uh, now into the western Pacific where we've got a large pool there of temperatures over 30 degrees degrees celsius invest 92w only just entering those warmer waters so it's actually going to get better for that system as it moves north not worse at least up until it reaches the southern japanese ryukyu islands north indian ocean as well at one or two spots off india there near 30 degrees celsius not far from that area that they've marked over there as well starting to move inland so compared to average, it is generally a tale of very warm oceans. The Atlantic generally 3 to 4 degrees above average in a few spots. The Eastern Pacific getting its game on as well, 2 to 3 degrees above in a few areas. And in the Western Pacific, very warm as well, especially in the subtropics where temperatures are running at 3 to 4 degrees above average. Why is all this? Well, I think some of the reason may be because we've not actually seen many tropical cyclones form, and so they haven't been able to suck up all of that heat energy from the oceans. There's the oceanic heat content really still on fire in the Western Pacific. Uh, that area of interest is in the middle of all that right now, uh, so a great opportunity for Invest 92W. Eastern Pacific looking still quite tepid there. Western Atlantic, though, uh, Caribbean and into the Gulf, still huge energy value use there as well uh, extending out over the uh, western uh, over the leeward islands and into the western atlantic well then let's take a look at the gfs computer model then for the next five days and it's showing those two weak disturbances in the eastern pacific well what's left of 92e does continue on towards the west there for a while you still may feel it as a small surface low by the time it ends up in hawaii later on early next week and in the eastern part of the east pacific there that other little system no real signature on the gfs model so really struggling there it's near the bottom actually uh, moving off towards the west and eventually it gets a little bit lost. And this is the Western Pacific looking at these two systems. The GFS, not sure on that Western system, but it might become a brief tropical storm. Yes, there it is. And that Eastern system becoming a typhoon and really ramping up quickly. Got to tell you, crazy from the GFS. By the end of day five there, uh, that is a 921 millibar low. That is borderline category five status off the coast of Taiwan. Could that happen? Yes. Will it? Not sure, uh, but certainly something to watch out for very closely moving through those southernmost Ryukyu Islands, places like Miyakojima um, and the Yayama Islands as well. Rainfall expectations then over the next seven days are going to be sky high underneath that typhoon if it does get to the giddy heights that are being forecasted. After that it moves on towards China, not too far from Shanghai. Uh, a second area of rainfall as well over Hainan now from 91W, possibly 14 inches, 350 millimeters. Philippine rainfall totals will be from 92W up to 22 inches possible uh, northwest of Manila and 30 inches possible over Taiwan, which is 750 millimeters. 
Well, there is that very powerful typhoon starting to weaken and then it makes landfall in China there along the east coast. I used to know the provinces. I can't remember where exactly that one is now. It might be Fujian and then moving inland, moving northwards, then off towards the northeast in the end, turning post-tropical uh, relatively quickly. This certainly is one to be watching out for very closely. Uh, the early signs for this system are looking very promising as we've seen on satellite imagery and with that bank of uh, area around it, it's looking very good and maybe very resilient. Scan the barcode and that will take you through to the Force 13 merch store where you can take a look at all of our items as well as our full season and individual storm animations on request. And we're still waiting for Hone. That t-shirt proves it. Well, in the silly range, we're not really got much to look at in the longer range there. Uh, day 10 to 16, Eastern Pacific could be a new system there that finally gets the season off uh, to a stronger start. Possible hurricane there. It's really remarkable how we've just had a letter so far, and it was a very brief uh, 40 mile an hour tropical storm that would have gone undetected in years gone by I'm sure uh, but here is this possible new system very late this is 1st of August now we're talking August here for our second name storm of the east back uh, there it is becoming a hurricane and in the western Pacific during that same time period what are we looking at here uh, maybe a potential new storm forming out of somewhere um, I can't remember where oh one right out over the open ocean there towards the right hand side becoming a tropical storm and eventually making a run for typhoon status far, far away from any land areas. But apart from that, the Western Pacific, after this current situation with the two invests, looks like it will be relatively quiet once again. And this is another basin that's been struggling to fire so far this season. But obviously, with this threat we're looking at, could be a big buck in the trend, just like we saw in the Atlantic. Well then, back to 2011 and we had a different situation on this day. We had Typhoon Matt on, which was holding its own as it was reaching the coast of Shikoku, Japan. Uh, it was uh, formerly a very powerful typhoon. It had weakened substantially by this point, but it st still caused some significant impacts across the Japanese islands. We also had Tropical Storm Brett in the Atlantic, a weak TS that was moving off the coast of Florida, uh, way far away from the coast of Florida, northeasterly moving. And Dora in the Eastern Pacific uh, became a tropical storm today as well, moving west. So with that potential threat of 92W, we're back to today's lineup. The next name in the Atlantic is Debbie. In the Eastern Pacific, it's Bud. And in the Central Pacific, it is still Hone. So no matter how bad the East Pack is this year, it's not as bad as the Central Pacific that's been waiting nearly five years for that storm. In the Western Pacific, could it be Gamey that gets this name that becomes a powerful typhoon? And in the North Indian Ocean, the next name on the list there is Asna. We're still stuck at just 24 storms so far this year, which is far behind every other season in the satellite era. In the Australian region, the next name is Robin. Southwest Indian Ocean, it's Ansha. And in the South Pacific, it's Pitta. That's it from today's Tropical Weather Bulletin. We'll be back again tomorrow. Become an ultimate fan today.